Hi folks, thank you for checking out my video. Today I'm going to do a walkthrough on how to install a subwoofer. So I am going to install this 8 inch 400 watt slim underseat active powered car subwoofer. So if you're interested, stay tuned and I will walk you through the whole process. All right, let's take a look at the features here. It has 400 watts peak power, but the normal operating power here is 100 watts. So it comes with a heavy duty mounting feed, low level RCA input, overload protection. And the other that I'm looking at here is the subwoofer level remote control, as well as the fuse rating, which is a single 15 amps. So you have the manual here. This is safety warning that you have to read through. And here's the subwoofer itself. It's really solid. It's beautiful solidly made and then you have all the input and output here there's a low level rca for connecting to your radio and then here's some wiring uh, power input here and as you can see here there's a 15 amp fuse that is already plugged in so it also comes with a uh, remote control here that you're going to have to hook it up to the back of the subwoofer here and so you can uh, control the levels of the volume to the subwoofer. You have all the uh, wiring parts here. You have the negative uh, power wire. Uh, this will be connected to ground. And then you have the uh, positive wire that you are going to have to connect to the battery. You can plug it in like so. You plug it in and then you plug in the RCA to your radio. Connect this to ground on the vehicle chassis and then to the 12 volt battery. Uh, this is a signal wire, that's a blue wire that you're going to have to connect to the radio in order to turn it off and on uh, the subwoofer. The remaining wires are called the high level input wires, also referred to as speaker input. Because my aftermarket stereo came with RCA outputs, I am not going to use these wires. Here are the mounting plates. These are for you to mount to the back of the subwoofer. I'm going to place this under the uh, passenger seat of my son's uh, vehicle. And actually this is a project that I'm doing for him. He's a teenager and he wants his car to sound to have more bass when he's listening to music. So I'm going to do that for him. So he wanted to see how I do this, but he's at school today. And I only have today off to, uh, to do some work on the car. So, so this is all Rockwell sent me in that package. I got this from Amazon. I can provide you the link to this product if you guys are interested. So you do have to buy additional items. Here I went to Home Depot and purchased a, a 10 gauge wire, you know, for the battery because you do have to run the wire from the front of your car, from the battery, through the firewall of your vehicle, and to finally connect it to the subwoofer. So now again, depending on where you're going to place this item, you might have to do some measurement to get the right length for the wire. So this is a 10 gauge wire, as you can see here. I think this might be a 12. I want to get a little bit higher gauge to handle the heat. Uh, the bigger wire, the better for the heat. The manual here, they recommend 8 gauge wire for both the ground wire and the uh, positive wire, but that's too big. 8 gauge is too big. I'm going to have a little bit of a challenge connecting a small wire to, to a bigger, thicker wire. For this wire, I purchased these connectors here. Take the installations out here. And then you plug it in like so, crimp it, and then you connect this to here like so, you crimp it, and then you make that connection like so, right? So it's one single piece. So the other items that I purchased from Home Depot are these connectors here. These are 10 gauge connectors. What I was after is the size of the ring here. And that's because when I uh, need to connect this to the battery, it needs to fit into one of the nuts of the battery. I'm going to connect the power wire. You need one of these to uh, take off the insulator about that much, like so. Plug this in. I have this crimper that I'm going to use and just to make sure that it's really tight so that, that you, have, you have that electrical connection. Yes, tight. So I'm going to cut about this much off. 
Earlier you saw there's a 15 amp uh, fuse that is already connected to the subwoofer, but uh, I just want to make sure I'm going to add another fuse here. But you want to put it uh, as close to the battery as possible, all right? I'm going to cut right there. You know, I purchased this fuse box here. You simply plug in the fuse in there like so, and then you close it, right? So you have that fuse line. You do have to cut the fuse because you have to connect the fuse to the power line. Here's what my power line looks like. I have the fuse here connected, and then I have the end connector here connected as well. So first thing first, you gotta figure out where you want to place your subwoofer. I'm going to place the subwoofer underneath the passenger seat. So it's going to fit right underneath the seat there. I pulled the seat back already. So here's the battery. The location of your battery might be different from here, but I'm going to hook the power line to here. And that's why I need that end connector to fit right in there. And then run the line across. So this is where all the other electrical lines are going to behind the firewall. So I'm going to insert the power line right in there. I don't think I need to cut anything. I just need to open this part here and just insert it right in there. So yours might be similar. Just find a way to insert the power wire in there. The next things I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the glove box so I can see from behind the firewall there when I insert the power line. In this particular vehicle, there's a screw here, a screw here, and a screw there. And then there's also a 10 millimeter that I need to take out as well as another screw in here. Again, yours might be different, so there might be a lot of videos on your vehicle on YouTube that will show you how to remove the glove compartment. So do some research on your particular vehicle. In order to take the stereo out, you have to shift this, this gear shift here back to give it room for the stereos to come out. So there's a little, uh, you can see here, so you can take it out there. I'm going to pop this out and then there's a button there so when you press that button you're able to bring the gear all the way back to give you that room i'm gonna pop it like that i'm gonna bring it all the way to l so now you have a lot of space between the radio and this gear here the screws are already off so now i just need to take this out of the way and I should be able to pull the whole thing out. This guy here to come off. And then, there we go. So I see some wiring here. I just disconnected the wires from these here. You just put a little flat screwdriver in there to bring this thing up so that it will release you know, the entire wire system there. And you can take this out. There we go. So now you have all the wire exposed. I'm going to go outside and insert the power line. And then from there, I can pull it and route it underneath the, the carpet. So here's the opening. I'm just going to insert this in there. So this is rubber. You just have to kind of move it out and stick it in there like so. See it's going in. And then I'm going to go to the other end to see where it ends up. And then from there, I can start pulling it. You see it? Yeah. There we go. See how it's coming off here? So now that you can see it, you can pull it from here and do what you need to do. So focus is really important. Now that I'm going to work on the radio, I am going to disconnect the battery. When you disconnect the battery, you want to disconnect the the negative first, you want to make sure you turn everything off in the car. So this way it doesn't produce any spark while you are disconnecting. If you have something on, that means something is live and there's going to be electricity running to that load. So you want to turn everything off so there's no electricity running in the car. There you go. And then I'm also going to disconnect the, the positive as well. Might as well. There you go. Just tuck it away. 
usually I like to put like a cap or something like that. I'm gonna use this here. So I do that just for uh, added safety. All right. So we're going to attempt to remove the stereo here. Just insert on the side. Boom. Boom. So I think they're just pressure clips along the side. Oh. And just pull it out. Okay, so there's pressure clips along the side here. There's four of them. They have four 10 millimeters bolts here. I'm just gonna leave these here. I'm not gonna unplug anything. Just leave them as it is, and then just take the radio out. Now this is aftermarket radio that I installed a while back because the original did not work anymore. And now my son has his car. The bolts are off and I'm just gonna pull this guy out. See how simple it is? And then see the wiring. So this is what the wire harness looks like. So don't be intimidated by all the wires here. So your stereo should be already connected. So you don't have to reconnect a lot of these wires. As you can see, you know, these are the speaker wires, the uh, green and the purple. And then you have the power wires already connected originally. And then you have the ground wire, the black here. So what you're looking for is the blue signal wire, right? And it should be coming off from the, the stereo itself. So here I have two blue wires. One is blue with white stripe on it. And the other one is blue with yellow. So that could be for the antenna, the signal wire for the, uh, the amplifier or the subwoofer should be blue and white. So I'm going to connect this to the signal wire from, from the subwoofer. So it should be blue and white. So basically you're only connecting the signal wire and the RCA wires, which are here. So here are for the speakers, but for the subwoofer are the two at the bottom here. Folks, I run the signal wire, which is the blue, and then also the RCA wires. You just have to find a way. There's a lot of nooks and crannies in there. So here's what's happening. I'm pulling them out from this end here and I'm going to run it underneath so along with the power wire from the battery behind the carpet here and then eventually under the seat. I ran through the RCA here. I'm just going to connect the RCA to here. Now you notice I have a black one. So both white and black, they handle the left side of the sound of the music and the, the red is uh, for the right side. Pretty simple and it should be pretty simple for you guys as well. Don't worry about all these wires because they already been pre-connected to the, the speakers, right? If you already done so, if you're just hooking up the soft woofer, you just have to worry about the signal wire and the RCA for the bass. Folks, as you can see, the signal wires are now connected together. And then uh, also the RCA wires are connected as well. And all I have to do is put it back in place and then we're ready to rock and roll. <laughs> the stereo is now back in place. And also the remote control, I managed to find a nice spot here. So I use a double-sided tape to attach it to this piece here. And I was lucky enough to find a little hole there where the wire here can fit in without interfering with the rest of the stereo. Now I can just put this back in there, like so. Secret lighter here, back in place. Tugging all the wires underneath the panel here, like so. Let's go to the subwoofer itself and see what's happening there. All right, so here's my the subwoofer here. I have the RCA connected here, the remote control wires here, the harness are here, and it's connected to the power line that comes directly from the battery. 
I need to put like electrical tape on it just to secure it. And luckily, I found a nice space for ground. Now you have to make sure that you ground the subwoofer, otherwise it won't be turned on, right? Because the electricity has to uh, run in a full circle or circuit. Let me show you what I did here, right there. See, that's my ground, okay? It will not turn on if you don't connect it to ground. That's a really nice metal piece here. Clean this up a little bit so that we have uh, conductivity. It will go back to the, uh, the battery, all right? Uh, again, in vehicle, you know, your, your negative line is the, uh, the chassis of the car. So this way you don't have to use a long line. As you can see, it's very short here. So when you turn on the radio, once I hook up the battery, this power here should come on. And then you can adjust the different features here as you like. So let's reconnect the battery and see what happens. And I'm going to push this all the way back here and then pull the chair back so that it'll cover the whole thing. As you can see, this uh, item here fits perfectly underneath the seat and you can move it back and forth without scratching it or touching it. It's just, there's still plenty of room in there. I'm taking off the nut here. And I'm going to insert this right here, like so. Put it back on. So it fits perfectly. This one, I'm gonna have to cut some piece off here so that I can cover. And then I'm going to strap the wire along the lines here. Eventually I'll get a, um, a heat shield to cover it, but I don't have it at the moment. And again, when you connect the battery, you start it with positive and then the negative. So you want to make sure everything is off. All right, folks, so here's the moment of truth. I'm going to turn on the car here to accessory. See what happens. There we go. All right, so as you can see, it's coming on now. I'm going to turn off the volume just in case because it's probably copyrighted music here. As you can see here, the LED light comes on as well. Uh, here, with the knob here, you can adjust the level of subwoofer or bass that you want to hear. So this is incredible. It's working, guys. So this tells me that I connected uh, correctly and that I don't have to go back and, and redo the work. So we're going to hear some ACDC because the songs have a lot of bass and it's just thick and heavy. Uh, so we should be able to hear some really good solid music here. So crazy man it's just so thick and uh, full didn't realize how good it sounds you know with just a soft woofer so anyway uh, unfortunately because of copyright I can't play the music for you uh, but I hope it was helpful I'm going to list every item that I use on this project in the uh, video description so you know where to find them in case you are uh, doing a similar project again thank you for watching the video and i hope to see you again soon